Willkommen auf passives Einkommen mit Peer-to-Peer -Peer. und damit auch willkommen zum nächsten Teil des Peer-to-Peer-Lifestyles bei Mintos und jetzt werdet ihr ein paar Mitarbeiter von Mintos kennenlernen. Ich habe unzählige Interviews geführt, aber ich werde jetzt nicht alle veröffentlichen, weil das einfach, ich glaube, weiß ich nicht, 10, 20 Stunden an Videomaterial ist. Ähm, ja, ich habe ein paar interessante Szenen herausgeschnitten und die zusammengesetzt, sodass ihr einen Eindruck von den Mitarbeitern bekommen könnt und was die hier alles so treiben. Ich glaube, am Ende ist das ziemlich, ziemlich interessant geworden und ich bin schon sehr auf eure Kommentare gespannt. Ja, schönen guten Morgen aus Riga. Ich bin jetzt vor den Mintos Büros und wir machen jetzt eine kleine Führung für alle, die beim Meet and Greet nicht dabei waren. Und das Coole ist, heute findet die Führung sogar in Deutsch statt und zwar durch Elmas, richtig? Genau. Was machst du hier so? Äh, ich bin ähm, der Mitarbeiter der, des Kundendienstes. So, ja, wir arbeiten mit, mit Kundenfragen und ja, ich zeige euch mal unser Büro. Ja, und ich glaube, du bist auch bei uns in der Community, ne? Also, ja, genau. genau. Wenn ihr da mal Fragen habt oder so, supportmäßig, dann taggt ihn einfach und dann äh, sieht er die hoffentlich und beantwortet sie. Ja, lass uns gerne anfangen. So, äh, lass uns anfangen. So. Wir stehen jetzt hier vor den Wintersbüros. Vor den Alten muss man schon fast sagen, weil ähm, genau. ihr zieht jetzt um, ne? Ja, wir, wir ziehen hoffentlich Ende August um. Okay, ja. das heißt, ja, das, die letzte Office-Tour, die ich hier gemacht habe, war in einem anderen Büro, jetzt äh, wieder eins und bald dann vermutlich ein ganz neues Büro. Ja. So. <lacht> ähm, hier haben wir unser, äh, äh, ich glaube, äh, den, den größten Raum. Also mhm. hier geht es äh, eigentlich um, um Finanzen. Also hier äh, sitzt zum Beispiel unsere Buchhaltung, mhm. also danach dann äh, äh, Finanzleute, die um, um die äh, Überweisungen kümmern, äh, dann auch äh, Juristen, äh, die Personalabteilung äh, und auch die, äh, die Datenwissenschaftler, die, die all diese Grafiken, äh, äh, an den Grafiken arbeiten und äh, ja all also diese Reporte machen. Und ich glaube, ihr nutzt den Raum auch als äh, Meetingraum, ne? weil er ziemlich groß ist. Genau, ja. ja. Äh, hier sammeln wir uns äh, mindestens zwei, zweimal pro Monat, wo mhm. wir äh, äh, alle Teams über, über die Aktualitäten berichten. Also, so dass, also für uns ist es wichtig, dass alle wissen, worum es geht, also mhm. was jedes Team macht und, und so. Das heißt, ihr habt dann ein Meeting, wo ihr euch austauscht und... Genau, ja. genau, ja. Ah, und da vorne sitzt auch der Martins Schulte, was sehr, sehr cool ist, dass er hier, er hat kein eigenes Büro, sondern er sitzt äh, mitten mit dem Team zusammen. Ja, Finde ja. ich extrem sympathisch. Ja, wir alle sind irgendwie gleich. Ja, ja. ja in Deutschland ist das oft nicht so. Also meistens äh, ja, sind die CEOs da komplett abgekapselt von, ja. von allen anderen Menschen. So, hier, hier haben wir unsere Küche. Mhm. Ähm, nicht so groß, äh, aber ja. Deshalb ist es immer noch okay. Also wir hey. haben, äh, ja, wir haben äh, Obst, äh, Snacks, Getränke und mhm. vielleicht kann ich hier auch äh, ein Mittag Mittagessen. Und das ist äh, frei alles für die Mitarbeiter? Also äh, Obst und sowas? Ja, das, das ist frei. Ja. Okay. Das ist so, gut. Hier können wir auch ähm, den Plan unseres neuen äh, Büros sehen, also was, was wir da haben werden. Äh, das heißt, ihr seid schon fleißig am Planen, ja? Genau, ja. Ja. also das, das Plan ist schon fertig eigentlich. Ja. Jetzt muss es einfach realisiert werden. Okay. So, dann gehen wir weiter. Das heißt, ihr seid schon am Einrichten oder äh, noch nicht? Ist noch nichts äh, geschadet, ist noch alles komplett leer? Es wird leer. immer noch gebaut, aber ja, also die Einrichtung wird dann im, vielleicht im, im Juli oder August, August stattfinden. Mhm. So, äh, hier haben wir... Äh, Uh, unsere zwei Teams, uh, also sind uh, das Risikoteam mhm. und uh, das Team des, uh, der Partnerschaften uh, mit den Darlehensanbahnern. Okay. Also die, die müssen natürlich zusammenarbeiten, so dass ja. Das heißt, hier überwacht ihr die Situation der verschiedenen Darlehensanbahner, wenn es nicht so gut geht. Ja. Und ja, wir äh, schließen neu, neu an. Und, mhm. ja. Wir haben auch äh, vier äh, Konferenzräume, also das ist der das größte Raum Aha. und äh, da wir äh, jetzt sehr viele Leute äh, sind, äh, sind, sind die, diese Räume fast immer 
gebucht mhm. und äh, ja, deswegen, deswegen haben wir auch solche Sessel da, da können einfach äh, äh, Leute zu zweit oder, oder hier zum Beispiel Martin, Martin Sitz, äh, da mhm. können wir auch etwas äh, äh, so besprechen, äh, so dass wir nicht den, den, den Raum stören. Nutzen. Ja. So, ähm, Das ist auch so ein ziemlich großer Raum. Äh, hier sitzen, äh, sitzt unsere IT, also die Entwickler und die äh, Tester. Mhm. Äh, so, äh, hier haben wir auch äh, unsere Teams, die um Marketing, äh, Produktentwicklung und auch äh, Design kümmern. Mhm. Also ja, unser Team wächst sehr, 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 sehr schnell. Ja, und vielleicht hier für äh, die Community, das ist aktuell mein Arbeitsplatz. Ich bin eben angekommen, noch nichts ausgepackt. Und hier äh, sitze ich jetzt eine Woche und kann meinen Kram machen. <lacht> ja. So. Und äh, wir haben noch ein Team, also mein Team äh, des, äh, des Kundendienstes. Äh, wir, wir sitzen Hallo. eigentlich unten. Ja. Ja, wir können hier. Äh, ja, ich habe es beim Meeting schon gesehen, dass ihr, dass ihr im Keller sitzt. <lacht> ja. Äh, es ist einfach nicht so viel Platz in, da oben. Und deswegen, also es ist auch für uns äh, etwas ruhiger, dass wir ähm, unser eigenes, äh, äh, unser eigenen Raum haben. Mhm. So. Wie lange sitzt ihr schon hier unten? Ähm, ein paar Wochen. Okay. So. Und hier arbeiten wir mit, den, mit, mit euch Investoren. Mhm. So, äh, wir arbeiten also in all, all diesen äh, äh, Sprachen, die, äh, die man äh, auf der Plattform sehen kann. Ja. Also äh, Telefongespräche, Chats und, und auch E-Mails werden hier beantwortet. In wie vielen Sprachen seid ihr unterwegs? Ich glaube es sind sieben. Okay. Also Lettisch, Russisch, äh, Englisch, Spanisch, äh, Deutsch, äh, was noch? Tschechisch. Ja. Nehmen wir an, du machst den gesamten deutschen Support dann. Ja, also wir, wir sind jetzt zu zweit ah, okay. äh, auf Deutsch. Und, okay. und ja, äh, hoffentlich werden wir in der Zukunft äh, mehr, mehr Mitarbeiter äh, unterschreiben. Äh, ja, wir haben die, die meisten äh, Investoren kommen eigentlich äh, also, 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 also im deutschsprachigen Raum und deswegen. Ja. Also es geht jetzt, aber ja, wir hätten. Einige, einige Leute mehr, mhm. die Deutsch sprechen. Wie viele offene Tickets habt ihr aktuell? Äh, um 500. Okay, ja, das ist super. Ich sehe, äh, ich weiß nicht, darf ah, ich das filmen überhaupt? Das, äh, das ist, äh, also <lacht> Sonst. Ist, äh, ist das Info vielleicht. Ah, okay, nee, dann mache ich es nicht. Äh, naja, auf jeden Fall sieht man da das, oben. Ja, das ist sehr, sehr cool. Die äh, Top-Ticket-Solver. Äh, so Ziemlich cool. Habt ihr so eine kleine, so eine kleine Challenge immer jeden Tag, wer die meisten ja, Tickets schließt? Ja, ja, machen das auch. Ja, natürlich, jetzt haben wir ganz viele äh, Anfragen über Investment Access. Das ist sehr aktuell. Ja, aber ich äh, möchte wissen, wie, ja, das, wie das funktioniert. Und so. Ja, ich bin ja, ja, mehr, mehr Fragen in der Zeit. Mhm, ja, das glaube ich euch. Ja. Wenn die Investment Access Option können Sie ja, das, das also eigentlich das war's. Und dann das wird dann ja. automatisch. Dann, wie gesagt, werden wir hoffentlich Ende August oder Anfang September schon im neuen Büro sein. Mhm. Da gibt es mehr Platz und ja, uns wird es besser gehen, also mit mehr, ja. mehr Luft und so. Und ich habe gehört, ihr hattet eine Aktion, ihr hattet äh, ziemlich viel Tickets zu bearbeiten und habt euch ein Wochenende hier als Team getroffen und die ganzen Tickets an einem Wochenende abgearbeitet? Ja, also eigentlich äh, haben äh, auch viele, viele Mitarbeiter von, von anderen Teams äh, äh, das auch mitgemacht. Okay. Und es, es war für den auch gut zu sehen, wie das von unserer Seite aussieht und äh, was, was die Investoren so fragen. Mhm. Äh, und ja, das war ein, ein tolles Engagement von, von allen. Das glaube ich, ja. Ja, Martin hat erzählt, das war aber freiwillig, ne? Also ihr seid ja. freiwillig hingekommen und äh, Eben, ja. habt alles mal weggeräumt. Ja, sehr, sehr cool. Hm. Ja, ich danke dir für die Tour. Ja, gerne. Und ähm, jetzt gehen wir wieder nach oben. Ja. So, Vitali, who are you and uh, what are you doing at Mintos? Yeah, I'm um, head of investor service team here, here at Mintos. So at the moment uh, we are 14 guys who are uh, servicing our um, investors. And yeah, I'm helping them, them uh, to communicate with our uh, investors who invest in the loans on our platform. 
and to, to serve them in the best possible way. I'm a data analyst. That's a very broad name for that, but basically. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm working with uh, lots of data, mm -hmm. mostly web data, and uh, I gather it together with all other kind of data we have. And um, what I try to do is uh, support business. And that means that we want to make business decisions based on data, mm -hmm. not just gut feeling or, or intuition or something like that. I'm the guy who gathers all the data and uh, delivers insights that we can leverage to increase our growth, mm -hmm. to increase our metrics, our North Star. So uh, I'm the one who tries to set uh, goals and uh, help them to achieve them. That's very broad uh, meaning. But uh, yeah, when somebody needs data, they basically come to me. My name is Martin Schwalters. I'm a co-founder at uh, Mintus. I actually joined uh, slightly later. Uh, so Martin was a uh, in initial co-founder. I used to work with uh, Martin uh, back in Ernst and Young, uh, so like 15, 15 years ago. Uh, so that's how I knew him. Actually, I remember very clearly the day when we uh, had a beer in in Old Town, and he just had come back like from his uh, MBA studies and was talking about the idea of of Mintus. I don't recall if the name was already decided at that, that moment, but the idea was uh, there. I liked it quite quite much, and uh, before I fully full time joined uh, as a co-founder, I actually helped out uh, on, on building the system, helping to test that. And basically, yeah, just like a few months later, I, I I joined. So what I have been doing here, it's definitely has evolved over those uh, for four and a half years. So. Me and other Martin, we were the first customer support service <laughs> people. Yeah. We were the first accountants. So basically, whenever uh, like investors first send in the money, so we manually put it in. So obviously, we not have a team now, and like much of that has been all automated. Uh, but uh, if you look in uh, kind of like three larger blocks, I would say like my responsibilities is related to the finance. So responsible for the finance department, treasury. Uh, other part is related to risk management, uh, meaning how we are evaluating loan originators who are joining us, uh, mm -hmm. if we are uh, okay with them. And then the third part is on uh, running different operational projects, uh, we kind of implementing uh, some, some new idea or uh, applying for a license, such as like we're doing now for uh, electronic money institution license. So, yeah, this would be like three larger uh, categories where I'm involved. Yeah, so yeah, my name is Yurgis and I'm head of engineering at Mintos. So uh, the kind of my main responsibility is uh, um, is related to the execution part of uh, IT uh, in in at Mintos. So I'm responsible about uh, getting things done. <laughs> so that's uh, one of my my uh, main duties, and of course. Uh, other than that, uh, I'm responsible also for the growing the team, engineering team, thinking about recruitment, thinking about composing the teams, and uh, thinking about the processes of, of development, so everything runs smooth. So yeah, my name is Eva. I'm the product owner of the mobile app, and basically I'm not alone here, I have a team. I'm working together on the mobile app development with a designer already, and also iOS and Android developers. I started the loan like for a month or a month and a half. Yeah. But uh, yeah, like we are still hiring actually. We are still looking for uh, more developers. But right now we, it's like a really good, uh, like good combo for a kickoff. My name is Andres and I'm working as a software engineer here. Okay. So, and mostly I'm focused, my tasks focus on the front end, the user interface and mm -hmm. user uh, experience. So, yeah. Working close together with the design team and yeah, try to make the experience look better and better. Yeah, I'm Marcis. I'm head of product in Mintus, so I'm responsible for the product development. Basically, what all the things that investors see, and also a lot of things that they <laughs> don't see because uh, there are a lot of different algorithms and things like that behind this. Yeah, my name is Maria Pedli. I work here as head of people and I joined company actually in last August. So this uh, upcoming August, it will be one year 
I have been working uh, uh, for the company. And uh, yeah, my role is uh, basically to help our company to build a great team, to find the best people on the market, mm -hmm. and not only on, on Latvian market, but also outside of Latvian market in Europe. We are expanding now very actively, and we are very keen to attract best talent from all over the globe. So build a, uh, build a great team and then uh, keep our people happy. So they are enthusiastic, they give their whole self to this work, they drive the growth of the company, they uh, support this awesome growth and, mm. and tremendous uh, kind of achievements. Yeah, so this is, this is my role. Basically. I'm Eva and I'm a risk manager at Mintos. I'm uh, co-leading our uh, risk team with my colleague Carlos. I've uh, been in Mintos for around three and a half years now, so I actually was the 13th person joining the com oh. <laughs> com uh, team. So, uh, from my experience, I've actually went through a lot of uh, in Mintos. Like, I started actually as a business development analyst, mm -hmm. but I was doing like sales, I was doing finance, I was helping both Martin Schulte and Walters. And uh, that's how I basically started. Uh, I'm Igor, I'm Chief Marketing Officer at Mintos, and I'm responsible for marketing. Okay. What, what does it mean? What, uh, what are you doing the whole day? We have uh, talented professionals. Now we are 12 people in marketing. Mm -hmm. What we are doing, we are working on bringing new investors on the platform, mm -hmm. popularizing Mintos, uh, making sure investors are satisfied. And working closely in, the, in this respect with all other teams like product mm. uh, to improve the product, investor service team to make sure investors have the best investor experience, yeah. etc. So I'm Janis. I'm uh, leading the loan originator partnership department, and our mission is to ensure that the loan originators who use Mintos uh, can uh, achieve their funding goals on Mintos, mm -hmm. uh, that they receive uh, a world class service, and also we source new loan originators and hence provide the investors with uh, new investment opportunities. Mm -hmm. Okay. So talking about Mintos, um, what are the actual situation about your liquidity? How is, how is your business going mm -hmm. at this time? Yeah. So what, we're all, uh, like what we are focusing currently and we have been focusing over the last few years, it's, uh, it's a growth. Uh, growing uh, number of investment opportunities, meaning uh, loan originators where investors can grow, re uh, growing uh, number of, of investors who can access this, uh, these investment possibilities. And besides that, like over the last two years, we have also managed to be profitable. Mm -hmm. This has never been a, a, our goal, per, per se. Quite un unexpected, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> but, we could put it, put it that way, that's uh, kind of un unexpected. But at the same time, uh, we're kind of, when looking forward, uh, we don't set any, uh, we don't set any uh, goals or targets in terms of profitability. So there are like other uh, internal metrics what we are uh, monitoring. And we are now also ready to accelerate our growth even more. Uh, as you probably know, we raised additional 5 million euros uh, yeah. from our uh, venture ca ca capitalists, uh, which we will invest in uh, growing our marketplace, developing new products, uh, going also in uh, and offering uh, payment services for our, uh, for our clients. Uh, on top of that, there will be additional card and so on. Mm -hmm. So we are sufficiently cash, uh, cash stuffed. So we don't foresee to kind of need to raise additional money in uh, in short term future, and now we're kind of well equipped to grow the team and grow our business. We saw some weeks ago, I think, an IPO from uh, Neo Finance mm -hmm. in Lithuania. Um, there was a question: um, Is Mintos also planning uh, mm -hmm. to make an IPO in the future, maybe? Yeah. So it, it's definitely on our uh, roadmap, but like. Very f not very far, but like further in the uh, future. And by further in the future, I mean that like we are not talking about this on kind of any on daily basis or even on some like quarterly planning. Mm -hmm. So this is something what we keep in mind and would be a potential uh, e exit uh, scenario. 
but at the moment what we are doing we're concentrating very much on just like building the, the business building additional value both for our investors for our lo loan originators mm -hmm. and uh, by building more sustainable business and IPO should be coming as a closer scenario and more, more realistic so now let's say uh, maybe it's an option for the next mm -hmm. five years yeah so I, I wouldn't say no like for the for the five years but I would really not like <laughs> <laughs> like any target date yeah that's okay um, so talking about a possible financial crisis how do you prepare Mintos for this if it's possible to prepare yeah, yeah it's, it's a great question so regarding our approach in general is like how we see that uh, uh, we would be ready for that is uh, through diversification and what I mean by diver diversification it is building well diversified uh, in investment uh, base so in this case this would be like different uh, different loans and this is also like reason why we basically from day one we're looking uh, internationally and we're mm -hmm. building this uh, available loan base from first of all from different countries second there's like if it's even within one country this would be different type of loans be like secured car loans mortgages personal loans invoice financing and when you go like internationally it's also like different different currencies mm. and um, the whole idea there is that uh, kind of going back to the crisis into global uh, crisis in 2008 at that moment i was working at uh, ernst and young and even like in a small area such as like Baltic states like Latvia, Estonia, Lithuania, I saw that like this crisis hit the, all of the countries first of all at different uh, time. Mm -hmm. It also hit it like at much different uh, magnitude. And when you kind of look at more global uh, scale, so like Poland and some other countries in Europe kind of never even technically went into a recession. I mean, you look in even more global scale, so there are countries that have been developing, like Australia has not been in recession for, what, like 30 years or so. So, mm -hmm. uh, so it's not like a matter of question, like when the next crisis will be. Uh, it, it's not a question if there will be a next crisis, there will be a crisis. I don't think that it will be as big as it was like back in 2008. So just like a matter of when, when something will happen and mm -hmm. until that moment, what we want to do is um, basically build a well diversified portfolio where investors can invest. Can you give us uh, maybe three examples uh, for better understanding what you are actually uh, doing? Okay. Um, one of the examples, um, we recently had an idea that we need to show what value can Mintus bring to completely uh, new users that aren't registered yet on the page. Mm -hmm. So we have these landing pages that users come to, to Mintus and uh, we added very basic thing, uh, a calculator, right? But, um, and we measured whether or not this calculator uh, helps, you, uh, helps us, helps the user and we receive more registrations. Mm -hmm. And what was very interesting um, that we saw a uh, significant increase on desktop but on mobile, uh, we saw a decrease. That's why you need tests. And, uh, and we, then we decided that we need to uh, completely new concept for uh, mobile devices, okay. how they interact with this calculator, and uh, maybe even something else. And we don't need that there. What's, what is the procedure if you're testing new designs um, based on your data? How it looks like if you, for example, uh, develop a new landing page based on your data recommendation? Yeah, the first part is definitely figuring out in the whole user journey what isn't working. So basically, we look at the data and see some uh, drop-offs in some pages, and then we start to identify what is not working. So mm -hmm. we, we do user tests. So our investors are actually very kind in uh, helping us to do them. Oh, yeah. So uh, we just ask them, some of them, to help us, and they are willing to do it. Uh, we thanks to them. And uh, we had this conference. Uh, and uh, the investors came to us and uh, we were showing these mobile app prototypes yeah. and they were willing to give us uh, their feedback, very valuable. Also, uh, I thank you again. Um, so we are dissecting the problem, trying to understand from a user's perspective with user interviews, user tests, and uh, 
we use the heat maps uh, that basically when you can see uh, where the user clicks on, on, on the page mm -hmm. and how far he scrolls, and then we formulate a hypothesis. So basically but we can see, I don't know, um, something is, isn't visible enough. We need to like increase contrast to that part of the section. Uh, we develop a hypothesis, for example, by changing this image, uh, we will in, increase our, I don't know, how, how many users create alternatives. Mm -hmm. And then we launch a test, part of the users see the new image, part of the users don't, and then we measure. And then when that's done, you know, the measurement is ready and we can see that that's actually working, then we uh, give a task to the developers and implement that. Mm -hmm. So that's how we optimize. Okay. It, it all starts with the research and the user. So what is the at this time the most popular part of the Windows website? Where are the, most of the users? I think which you, users are investors. Um, yes, the investors. Um, actually, what I've seen, most of investors are looking at overview a lot. So basically, they just come in in various times and look at the overview. That's the most popular section of our website. The dashboard where you can see the interest and so on. Hmm. Yeah, and the second popular is uh, auto-invest, of course, editing auto-invest, because you open the dashboard, you want to change something, you edit auto-invest, so yeah. How many tickets do you have in a, in a normal week? Uh, uh, oh, well, this is a good question. I think um, in a week we had around 1,500 at the moment. For 10 people, right? Um, yeah, yeah, uh, well, we will be 14 colleagues 14. This, week, this week, yeah. What is the most asked question in your support mm -hmm. team? Do you yeah. know? Yeah. Um, uh, to be honest, we are working in a way that if we see that uh, something is asked really often, we just uh, change the product. We understand that maybe we have built something in a bad way and mm -hmm. we, can, uh, we can react fast and uh, we have a lot of engineers here who can, who can change everything. And yeah, if, if you see anything which is asked too frequently, we don't want to work and, uh, with such questions and we just change the product. Of course. But, but of course, um, there are questions who, who, which arrive more frequently than others. At the moment, we, last week, we launched the Invest and Access product. And of course, there are many questions about um, Invest and Access. All the time, we are uh, receiving questions about auto-invest. Uh, uh, at the beginning, you need to understand some details how, how it's uh, working. So we are helping with this, as well as um, there are always investors who mess up something uh, with their payments. So they write uh, incorrect payment details or no, okay. time to time send uh, incorrect bank account uh, numbers or uh, time to time send uh, currencies uh, to, to bank accounts of other currencies. And we need to help them to, to find such payments. So th this, this is also something ongoing and what, what, what we are doing. So, um, what, what can the peer-to-peer -peer investor community do for you to make your product better? I mean, we are mm -hmm. asking you questions the whole day, but um, mm -hmm. what can we do for you? Yeah, good thing is that um, the emails and messages we receive from investors, they are not only about uh, bad things or, uh, or any mistakes we, uh, we maybe are having or uh, questions like uh, questions about how everything works. And good thing is that they also write about um, their feedback, just good things that uh, they have noticed that, for example, we have added uh, some features and things like that. Or they just um, write um, suggestions they are having and um, what they would like to see at our platform. So they can definitely to continue, uh, continue to do it because we introduce the things which are most uh, asked the most. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's all, we are always happy to, to receive uh, good words from them. And uh, of course, on the other side, uh, you know, we are a web technology platform, and uh, I think that there have never been any web technology platform where there hasn't been any mistakes uh, of course, yeah. like that. So, so yeah, we are, we are always uh, happy to receive information about them, and we, 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 we always uh, are trying to solve them in, in the best uh, possible way. When you will launch the mobile app? Uh, we are aiming for autumn, like something somewhere October, November. Probably internally it will be available like even, uh, I don't know, at the end of the summer, but let's see. Yeah. We are really, we, tr we are trying to be really focused like to 
start with the simple app, as I said, just with the monitoring and overview fu functions, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna add uh, add on, like we're gonna see, mm -hmm. because you need to put it out there to test it actually in real life. Yeah. We already had some kind of user tests and uh, we made use of the P2P conference as well and talked with the investors how they how do they like uh, the, our prototype and stuff, but you, you cannot compare anything to like real usage and then the real feedback what we will have from investors afterwards. Is it only for convenience, the, the mobile app? Yeah, or? It's actually I'm not thinking. It's an interesting question because when when I started here, I mentioned that I was here alone like for a month and a half. Mm -hmm. That was my question. I was really trying to understand for what reason we're going to build the app, like the same questions that you asked me right now. Yeah. And well, of course, the daily banking, this is like apparent stuff like but if we if we go back to uh, back from that um i think that it it depends like on your or not your style but your like the way how you use mintus for example if you are really a beginner and you are just starting out mm. you are really enthusiastic and and, and stuff like that yeah. So, and you actually want, you want to check it like more often. You also are checking these daily summary emails and, and stuff like that. Yeah. And you want, you, you are know, like, you need the helping hand from the company, from the Minto side, just to, just to understand actually how the product works and things like that. Mm -hmm. If we, if we go to the part, like from, to that part that are really, I don't know, these, these investors that are really smart ones and that are investing big amounts of money and are using like really any like other platforms and even any like so like me <laughs> other ways of investments like stocks and stuff like that yeah. of course they will not use the mobile app the way how those like mid investors or like beginner investors are going to use mm. even in p2p uh, conference we found out that uh like those graphs on and those visual insights that we're gonna that we're gonna offer in our mobile app they are not so like those investors they don't find them really useful because they yeah. will anyway will like export the data by themselves and will make their own like excel sheets and uh, their own graphs yeah but still yeah it's like to answer that question it's just oh it's about the convenience anyway because you also use the mobile app uh, on your in your daily life, right? I try to avoid it, but yeah, some some of them I have to use. Most, yeah. <laughs> of, most of us like yeah. are using mobile apps. Even yeah. like when I'm at home, I'm not opening my computer. I'm just taking my mobile app and just going to the news and stuff. And the same the same here. Mm -hmm. Why you need to take the computer to just check your like overview if, if you can do it like more. Uh, quicker and like in a more convenient way here uh, via your mobile device. Did you use also or, or check also some other mobile applications from other peer-to-peer -peer platforms? Of course, this, like that's, that's the, my daily life. Yeah. Uh, actually, I'm not checking. I would like even not use the, that term. I would say stalk them. Yeah. <laughs> and not not only in P2P industry. I'm usually checking like uh, all kind of applications, and then I'm checking what what kind of things could be reused in my work or on, on my, in my projects that I'm working on. Mm -hmm. But uh, to be honest, about P2P platforms, there are not so many like really good no. examples that you can no. check. So yeah, I am going beyond P2P industry, okay. in, yeah, for sure. Extra resources mean you, um, your system is completely hosted in the, in the cloud and you can easily um, include another th server or something like this? Yes, exactly. So that's why one of the reasons why we use the cloud service is because they uh, provide capabilities to um, add some resources uh, on the go. Uh, so um, as, as I said previously, um, when we monitor everything proactively, we can act also very, very fast. So if you see that there's a trend of, of uh, load going up, so we can we can immediately um, increase the resources uh, capacity that that, that is uh, required to kind of manage that load. And what's about uh, data security? Uh, I mean, some investors are worried about uh, 
Microsoft, I don't know, uh, Amazon, Cloud, and so on. What are you doing in, in case of data privacy? Mm -hmm. So yeah, definitely we are kind of uh, following those JDPR um, uh, conditions that we need to uh, meet, uh, so we so we can satisfy all those uh, requirements on the GDPR. Mm -hmm. And other than that, we are adhering to uh, Amazon best practices how to keep data safe. Uh, so using lots of uh, built-in kind of security uh, policies and security um, kind of general approach to data security in the cloud. So we are seriously um, kind of um, ensuring that everything that we store is, is uh, kept safe. Um, and it's not just kind of uh, our own our own kind of uh, view on what is security, but we are uh, following the standards and, and the best approach is that is is used for the cloud platforms to store data securely. And uh, some things in the future, maybe which are upcoming. Can you say something? Um, yeah, I mean, I think uh, what we announced, uh, I guess it was already in uh, last uh, last year, was about the, the about IBAN IBAN accounts. Oh yeah. yeah. So that's something uh, we are uh, we are working hard really to get it done um, you know, this year. So that's that's where we are you now focusing our our forces. And, yeah. uh, and of course, there's not just that. But that's maybe something that already is is already in the public. And we have some internal ideas uh, how to improve here and there and different stuff. So investors would enjoy um, using this uh, platform more and more. Yeah. yeah, but as I understood, you are the lead engineer. Or what does it mean? Uh, <laughs> the lead means I can uh, have my. Uh... You, you earn more money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Hopefully soon, <laughs> so it will transfer also that. But it's like uh, more responsibility. The responsibilities doesn't <laughs> transfer like straight to more money. But it's uh, I can uh, have my opinion on strategy. But it's not like everyone else couldn't say like about strategy. But so I try to at least lead that front end part in a more uh, maintainable way, more uh, easy easier to scale up, like more people, more software engineers could join on that uh, tasks and mm -hmm. make that platform more usable, more nice looking for the investor. So yeah, mm -hmm. I would say so. I tried to push that, okay. more, uh, that uh, initiative. Yeah. So and how do you decide um, what's what's the next part, what, uh, what you develop uh, with your team? The one part. One uh, requirements comes from product owner, so mm -hmm. they have the vision or where we have to go, and uh, then as a team, actually we have a lot of uh, influence on how to do that because mm -hmm. uh, it's our responsibility, like basically how to implement things. Other big part comes from the investors, so we have a quite active feedback channel inside, mm -hmm. so our uh, investor service. Uh, who gets in touch with the investors like uh, they receive a lot of feedback so they just yeah. transfer it to us and then we discuss what we can implement now what we're gonna do like later and so on so on so yeah so basically it's two sides both internal like requirements and how we think it should look and then it's investors who gives us a lot of uh, great uh, uh, ideas. So the best way to help you is um, to to get in touch with the investor service. And, yeah, uh, I think that's the easiest. Yeah. First of all, yeah, you can get in touch with the investor service. Second, uh, I don't know if you have noticed, or uh, we time by time we have some surveys inside the platform. So yeah. also, it's not just because uh, we I don't know want to I don't know, disturb the investors or ask like something, but we actually have a hypothesis mm -hmm. or. Which we basically said before we launch those servers. So, and then we need to gather more data mm -hmm. to prove if the hypothesis is right, we should go in that direction or not. So, basically, that also we have uh, gathered a lot of uh, valuable information from surveys regarding the auto invest. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it helps also a lot. But first of all, yeah, it's an investor service. But um, you are not a shareholder of the company, right? Or do you have also? Some some but equity. All employees here are, are, are shareholders. Oh, ah, really? Okay. Companies, yeah. uh, we, we promote that that actually we give equity to, to, to employees as one of the benefits in the compensation package. Ah, cool. So, uh, but 
you earn or you get more equity after a couple of years or how, how is the model if you say, can say more yeah, about it it's like uh, like similar approach I mean, in silicon valley is that uh, you have these options and then you need to uh, work here a specific period uh, and then you can uh, uh, get those options like Get, get shares from those uh, options, actual shares. Tell us something about uh, Mintos uh, Invest and Access. Maybe you can start uh, why you decide to, to develop Invest and Access. Yes. Uh, we told, uh, we, we, uh, I told you already that some, some bloggers in Germany uh, uh, compare it to Bondora going grow, but I think this was not the reason that you develop Invest yeah, and Access. Yeah, the reason why we develop was that because we pay a lot of attention to the data and feedback and currently we are in the stage where we are like growing and getting more and more active investors and uh, in the beginning for the newcomer it was very easy you came to Mintus there are maybe few loan originators you said yeah. okay I want to invest in real estate or I want to invest in car loans and I, I, I will invest. And now it's so big. Uh. <laughs> yeah, but now when newcomers uh, come in and, and, and sign up in Mintos and when they get uh, to the moment when they actually need to start to invest, they notice, okay, there are more than 60 loan originators. Yeah. They are like completely from different countries with different structures. Somebody has a group guarantee, somebody does not. Yeah, you need to look at the financials and to like understand. Plus, it's too much. Yeah. Auto, auto invest uh, section is also like if you start to customize like you can really spend a lot of time but, but but that's also a very good product because you can like have really specific customized strategy for your needs and yep. uh, those more experienced uh, investors already says that, yeah that's the best tool and they are using that but for the newcomers it's harder to get them into the thing uh, of the peer-to-peer -peer. Mm -hmm. uh, especially if we are a marketplace and we have a different kind of these options where you can invest uh, that's why we decided to, 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 to simplify everything for them and to provide the product based on their needs. So what do they want? They want still high returns. Mm -hmm. They want diversified portfolio, like uh, also like risk reduced. So that's why we're including only those loan originators that have track record of six months in our platform, always by big guarantee mm -hmm. uh, loans. And uh, we... Uh, uh, we give like this diversification uh, possibilities for them as well. And the best thing for, for them, what also we, we got from the feedback is that actually if you are a newcomer to, 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 to Mintus and also maybe not even newcomer, that you are a bit scared to the investing in longer uh, maturity loans. Yeah. So you somehow avoid a lot of investors choose, okay, three months, five months, six, seven months, maybe a year, but all others, okay, it's, it's too much in the future. I don't know what will happen. Maybe I will need the money. And that's why we decided that we need to think about how we can provide this additional liquidity. Mm -hmm. And luckily, we have very large secondary market. Like, uh, I think previous week or week before we reach also a milestone there, 100 million of loans sold through secondary market. Mm -hmm. So it's very active and it provides high liquidity. That's why we decided that we need to put somehow all those things we have uh, in our minds together and uh, and build a product uh, that is yeah much easier to understand for newcomers, but also for existing ones and experienced ones. There are some of investors that also see advantages to choose invest and access uh, like better than auto invest. Tell us uh, maybe maybe if there is one. Tell us the biggest product fail. Uh, maybe from from the last year, maybe nobody knows it. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, there must I'm be sure something. Like one like funny fail that uh, we somehow did not recognize. Uh, we started uh, I think already a year ago, more focus on data and more focus on like we are tracking for all those things for usability and trying to improve and optimize. Uh, conversions for different flows and mm -hmm. what we did also probably investors have noticed that some time ago we redesigned uh, this uh, registration flow how newcomers can like, get account in the Mintus yeah. and we were tracking uh, the old older version to get the feedback and understand what are like some kind of pain points there where investors uh, 
I don't understand them where they stuck and they cannot sign up their account. And there were six or seven fields in, in, in the form and there was one field date of birth. Like very simple field you need to input just uh, the date when you uh, have your, your date of birth. And uh, it was very interesting that compared to other fields where you just enter your name, surname, like also simple information, investors usually spend maybe three to five seconds per field, like mm -hmm. enter and go to next enter. And then one field, I think 45 seconds. <laughs> you're like, and the birth date, right? Yeah, why, what, what's the problem <laughs> with, 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 with that field? Yeah, and actually it was, uh, it was, uh, very small bug, technical bug, is that when you open that section and start to scroll, it goes like, you know, you're in 2019 year. Uh, ah, you yeah, scroll okay. Scroll a bit and it goes like uh, 1950 <laughs> and it's very hard to get that, that date. And uh, we couldn't even imagine and there were no feedback from about that because you like probably sign up one just once and it's like mm -hmm. you did it once okay there uh, it was not so smooth but I, I will not say anything and from the data we found out and yeah it was like our fail but uh, those like ma major fails we I think we don't have of course we have bugs time to time and uh, that's like every everybody does them but we have a very strong QA team we pay a lot of attention mm -hmm. when we are developing things how how we validate that uh, the quality will be like the best one so uh, from that perspective i think uh, there haven't been so major major fails uh, in the previous uh, year or even some time ago yeah gratefully yeah. for you <laughs> <laughs> the passion is a good point because i worked a lot for peer-to-peer -peer, no, for peer-to-peer -peer companies not for it companies mm -hmm. in in germany and they are not uh, it seems often that they are not so connected to their mm -hmm. company, mm -hmm. but it's totally different here because mm -hmm. uh, the, the people like their jobs and they like Mintos. What do you think? What is the reason for this, that they are feeling themselves so connected to Mintos? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think, well, first of, uh, first of all, of course, it's um, uh, the company itself, the idea of the business, the product we are offering to our customers. Uh, you know, all our people who come uh, to work for Minches, they're very enthusiastic about the company, they're very passionate about their particular role and about the company as a whole. Uh, so that's kind of the, the main passion which kind of uh, unites us, uh, the main reason why we are here. But also as a company, we are trying to encourage people to bring their whole selves to the work, yeah, with all their passions, with, with their personal values, which we are hoping resonate with our company's values, with all like their interests. And we kind of try to kind of support and encourage to share mm -hmm. all that uh, within the working uh, place. So, yeah, probably that's kind of um, how we would um, kind of continue to keep motivation of, of our people going. Um, yeah. Okay. And how long are you working normally in a, in a normal work week? Do you uh, have myself? Uh, no, oh, not I just, uh, the people, just yeah. uh, the team. Do you have a regular mm -hmm. time? Well, if you have. Um, yeah, regularly kind of a, a set time in our employment agreements. But the matter is that as a company, we practice flexible working hours. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically, yeah, it, it's kind of indicated that it's uh, expected like a 40 hour week, but our people are able to build kind of their own uh, working schedule. They can uh, start their working day as early or as, as uh, late as, as they want. So they can then respectively mm, leave earlier or, or come yeah, leave or uh, leave earlier or later. Yeah. So basically, it's a lot of flexibility we are putting in, in place for, for people. And also, there is possibility to work from home. Mm -hmm. And also, well, of course, we have our unlimited vacation policy because we are strong believers that mm -hmm. if a person is uh, energized and have time actually to dedicate to their passions outside of working hours, again, they come back to work fully uh, energized and enthusiastic yeah. and actually giving their like 100% to the job. So, yeah, um, it, it kind of evol uh, revolves around 40 hours a week, but on the particular week, it could be less or, mm -hmm. or more just because people are 
kind of building their kind of individual working schedules around around their lives and around their passions outside work as well. And also, of course, there are specific deadlines, yeah, that are like new products we are launching, that are um, new initiatives we are working on as a company, as a business. And so those uh, deadlines uh, launches of our new versions of our sites, mm -hmm. of our features. So that kind of dictate also kind of business during particular weeks. And when, for example, launch uh, mm -hmm. is about to happen, again, the whole team uh, works hard and there are some probably like over... Uh, like longer hours during that particular week, yeah. but then during next week it's a little bit quieter and people can uh, okay. relax a bit more. This, this unlimited vacation is uh, really uh, interesting because in Germany we have mostly 28 days uh, mm -hmm. of vacation mm -hmm. in a year. Well, what does it mean, unlimited vacation? Can you explain it a little bit more? Uh, yeah, basically it means uh, yeah, whenever you need time to have some rest to recharge your batteries when you can you can take this time you can take this time off of course you have like fine print um uh, at the end of the policy that um the work needs to be done yeah okay. it, it means that actually uh, despite a particular team member vacation all the scheduled again launches or initiatives and so on they should go as, as scheduled as planned and basically it's for each of us as a kind of responsible team member just to manage it together with our manager or together mm -hmm. with our team members, how to reassign the tasks or how to make sure everything is delivered mm -hmm. and then probably uh, go on holidays. But yeah, it's uh, yeah, all grown up so we can manage our busy lives and our busy professional lives as well. So there's kind of a lot of ownership which we give to our employees, our team members, so they can manage mm -hmm. their um, holidays and busy professional lives. But yeah, uh, sometimes people ask our candidates, they would ask, okay, but can I have uh, like three months of vacation? Yeah. Can I have the whole year of work? That would be also my question, yeah. <laughs> uh, the answer to that question, no, yeah. because still work needs to be done. Yeah, we are getting things done. Um, we are high achievers. But yeah, it's just for us kind of to manage that uh, reasonably well. And mm. we, of course, are all capable of that. Yeah, we are kind of solid professionals. We are experienced people. And then when there is a quieter season after probably some very important launch is done or I don't know, usually it's quieter with our investors and uh, overall in the business during Christmas time or July, August, then again, you can um, agree with your team that actually you're taking a few weeks off and so on. And so, for example, I could, uh, I don't know, I have a vacation for three weeks and I could uh, uh, longer this uh, about one week and work mm -hmm. in this week from my from my place abroad or something like this. Yeah, yeah, also absolutely. Possible? And actually, yeah, we, we have people who are doing that. Yeah, that's two awesome. three weeks. It's it's a good um, vacation. For example, for a road trip somewhere in Italy, which yeah. was particularly popular activities activity among our employees recently this year for some reason, or I don't know, like sailing around some, I know, um, islands yeah. somewhere in, in your favorite sea. Yeah, it's it's a it's a good. Um, lens of, of vacation to have something nice done, some kind of journey you always dreamt about. Mm -hmm. So um, you prove also the new loan originators, right? Exactly, yeah, that's like the main task of the risk team. Yeah, can you can you tell us a little bit more about the process, maybe with, with an example of the last onboarded loan originator? Yeah, I can tell you. I think I maybe won't go in depth of like specific case but the overall process is the same okay. so uh, basically where the process starts is uh, that sales team has uh, like a list of prospective candidates they do like the first screening uh, for us like specific size of the portfolio loan mm -hmm. types they meet the management etc when they decide that the loan originator is good fit for us and both sides then uh, they fill out the due diligence template. Mm -hmm. What it involves for us is basically all the information about the business. So management, financials, regulatory environment, uh, type of business, product information, type uh, product uh, portfolio information, etc. And uh, when it comes to risk team, we basically evaluate and validate all the information. Our main goal is to understand the substance of the business. Mm -hmm. So we want to understand what drives the business, how the business can be sustainable in long term, because then we can see that, okay, yes, this company and this product we can offer to our investors. It has enough yield to cover all the interest costs for the investors, plus it has enough uh, profits so that it could cover all their costs 
and uh, be sustainable in the long term. Mm -hmm. And I think what's very important on our side and uh, maybe what investors doesn't don't see as much is that the portfolio evaluation is actually our main focus. Mm -hmm. And why so? Because we also strive on our knowledge of being able to evaluate startup companies. As you have most probably noticed, a lot of companies joining Mintos are yeah. in like early stage. And uh, what that means for us is that, uh, first of all, we have to understand how we can ensure that they have enough equity. It's either like subordination or etc. that we have specifically for these companies. Mm -hmm. Plus, we have to be sure that we see that the portfolio is performing. And uh, if we are sure that the portfolio is performing, that's basically just a question of uh, economies of scale. So uh, that's our like main focus on evaluating. Okay. Them. Plus, of course, we look at like the management quality. We look at whether there are some uh, new regulations upcoming or regulations that uh, may impact their profitability and the business model. They how they works with the uh, Mintos. Um, we look at their, of course, financials, etc. So there are a lot of aspects that we evaluate during our analysis. Mm -hmm. The process usually takes, I think, around two weeks for us, actually, oh, to I go through more. everything. And that involves, and that's if the ca like company is like very flexible and ad adapts very good to the timing, because we usually have multiple calls with them. We sometimes, if possible, also go on-site visits and check like the processes, the systems they work, etc. So, yeah. And how looks the risk management after the onboarding? I mean, you have to check all the time, right? Or do you exactly, have to... Exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, we currently base our monitoring on like quarterly basis. Mm -hmm. So uh, what we do also based on our Mintus rating, we basically check all the covenants set, we check all the financials, we check all the portfolio quality, whether that has uh, uh, declined or stayed the same or maybe doesn't agree what we've seen before. Plus, of course, what we want to see is that the rep a representative portfolio is put on our platform. Mm -hmm. What it means is basically that we want to ensure that, for example, loan originator has a non-performing loans ratio of like 10%, but then 60 plus buyback is like... 50% on our platform. Mm -hmm. That's not something we want to see here. And that's why we also control this part and check it at least on a quarterly basis based on their data, but also follow up on this like every week basically to see that, okay, yeah, that agrees with our expectations. Mm -hmm. So sometimes uh, we saw that, uh, that the risk we realize, um, for example, at Eurocent um, yeah. a year before or two years, I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, what, what did you learn about this? Uh, from this case yeah so uh, when we look at the risk department of course we also develop together with the company we develop together with other companies joining Mintos and uh, in this case what we learn maybe some lessons learned regarding like some focus points in our analysis that we should look at in the future mm -hmm. which I say is good plus it gives us more overview on like court system in Poland and how it look like how uh, we can and what we can do in terms of in terms of like debt collection but in this case what we understand that uh, we can learn from this of course but also we are we won't be the only ones who can impact the uh, situation and uh, of course crucial role is for communication on both sides. That's like one of the key points for, for us now, how to identify if we see that the loan originator might do something, maybe not in uh, the best way. Mm -hmm. um, because communication, if the loan originator stops communicating with us, it's like a very early red warning sign. Oh yeah, uh, I yeah. think so. And, um, what else? Um, I'd say we also now 
understand that the court system is really it might take time and we have to understand that and both also investors have to understand that that the default will always prolong the process yeah. for a ro really long time it's also the same with a normal loan right it could yeah. also take yeah. takes years so what what are you doing to reach new customers uh, basically the core things we are doing and the, the things which contribute the most to, to our growth, uh, we do uh, go into new markets, new geographies. So now we are pretty strong in, in Western Europe, mm -hmm. countries like uh, Germany, Netherlands. Uh, now we are focusing, for example, on, on, uh, on the Nordics. Okay. And uh, other things, basically, we are developing more and more relationship with the uh, blogging community, mm -hmm. people like you, mm -hmm. who help us popularize P2P investment overall. And uh, who help us also like to, to narrate a story which is understandable to, to investors on the other side. So what is your investor goal, let's say, for uh, 2020? How many investors will you have? Well, this I would prefer not to answer directly. And, uh, <laughs> still, I can give you... I mean, we, we, are, we usually are very transparent about what we do. Yeah. On our platform, you can also see all our numbers. Yeah. I can tell you, like, we are doubling more or less every year. And we intend to go... Uh, the same base. So what are your biggest challenges actually in uh, in marketing? In marketing? Mm -hmm. One of the biggest one is uh, basically simplifying uh, the product. Because if you think about Ninjas, you're pretty familiar with the product it's, yeah. and uh, you've been with us for, for years. Yeah, it was easy at the beginning, yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> now we are growing, we have um, new features, but at the same time we do understand these features, they're appreciated by what we call power users. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you look at me just with, with the perspective of a newcomer, it's not very easy mm -hmm. to understand like how it's working, or the best way basically to set up everything. So we are invest in, investing a lot now in, in creating like appropriate content there and explaining in much simpler terms. Mm -hmm. So it's one challenge. Uh, another one comes more like internal challenge. Uh, we are based in, in Baltics. Mm -hmm. And uh, for some functions, it's challenging to find uh, people with relevant experience who had experience with actually scaling business on a global scale, mm -hmm. it, which is solvable again uh, at our size. We now open an office in, in Germany, for example, for marketing function. And uh, we do manage, I mean, it's already at the stage where we do manage to, to attract very, very experienced people. Mm -hmm. People coming from companies like, uh, for example, PayPal, who've been doing kind of fintech related business for five, eight years. Yeah. Uh, can you give us a small roadmap how you onboard a new loan originator or how you find them? Mm -hmm. uh, from, from a bird's eye view, we are uh, just a mirror of the alternative lending sector. So what that means is that we typically follow the loan originators. At the moment, we have 60 loan originators with, with whom we work. Mm -hmm. And uh, quite a few of them are... Um, uh, international companies and they kind of expand from a country to country so uh, this is the kind of first signal that we look to 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 see whether there's alternative lending uh, market in a particular country um, then we do a certain kind of desktop research to learn more about the country mm -hmm. if it seems promising then we just kind of go on a fact-finding mission uh, meet with the uh, local uh, loan originators credit bureaus and kind of all the other ancillary industries mm -hmm. um, and then kind of we, we, we kind of meet most of the loan engineers who are of interest to us then we qualify them understand whether they uh, meet our requirements whether there's a kind of sufficient business case to be had mm -hmm. uh, and if they are interested if they are then we proceed to the due diligence whereby they uh, send in like a very detailed due diligence questionnaire, a AML questionnaire that our risk and AML teams scrutinize and see whether kind of they can really be onboarded to Mintos Marketplace and whether we should enable those loan originators to fund their loans uh, through Mintos Marketplace. Mm -hmm. If the decision is positive from the risk team, then we uh, agree on the main terms and start the onboarding process, which mm -hmm. basically is drafting of legal agreements, uh, developing the technical connection so they can send in the loans, and also preparing all of the materials to the, to the investors. 
Um, do you have uh, some some biggest learning in the last year from from onboarding loan originators? Is there something? Yeah, probably the learning was that the this this onboarding process is uh, lengthier and more complicated than than we used to think it is. Uh, and I think it grows bigger and bigger, right? Because you have more and more uh, uh, measurements. And exactly. So, so uh, basically, what we did over the past year, we um, so let's say a year or two ago, each and every member on the loan engineer partnerships team they were doing onboarding from A to Z. So they were doing the market research. They were approaching the loan originators, um, selling to them the kind of idea of funding loans through Mintos. Then uh, also collecting all of the information, then doing this kind of onboarding part in terms of getting the agreements done, API supported, and blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. So then, what you basically had was like very lengthy process with lots of kind of moving parts and lots of um, different parts, I would say. So now we've specialized the team. So there are people who uh, seek new partnerships. Then there are people who do the kind of this onboarding parts, the mm -hmm. kind of technicalities are uh, are there, and then there are people who work with the existing loan originators, and uh, that definitely you know, makes life easier for us and for them. Okay, let's come to the to the buyback guarantee. Um, I think it was the first platform who implemented the buyback guarantee. What can you say after now uh, four years? Um, is it sustainable? Yeah. Do you will focus to a buyback guarantee also in the future? I think we will continue focusing on the buyback guarantee. Um, it does come from, to a large extent from what the investors demand. And mm -hmm. investors obviously do appreciate this yes. smoothing of returns that the buyback guarantee provides. Um, yeah, so we will focus on, on, on loans with buyback guarantee, albeit kind of, I don't necessarily agree that this kind of buyback guarantee is, is kind of or lack of buyback guarantee is a clear like red 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 flag that you should invest in, in, in loans from particular loan originators. No, of course I really not. do believe that there's kind of uh, plenty of loan originators and loans without buyback guarantee, which still provide like very attractive risk return characteristics to the investors. Yeah, it also depends on the loan performance from from the loan originator, right? Sure. And as I learned, you 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 have loan originators who have been on Mintos for kind of. Uh, several years, so mm. you have a very good visibility into what their loan performance actually is. Mm. I, would, I would say you have sufficient information to make a good informed decision about investing in those loans. Yeah, and as I learned in Armenia with Martin uh, together, that for the loan originator it makes no difference if they use the buyback guarantee or not, right? Because they have to handle with the default anyway, so it's only. I would say even kind of for the for the investor in a kind of perfect information environment, it doesn't matter whether there is buyback guarantee or not. Because, for example, if the uh, the net return that the investor seeks is, I don't know, say, 10%, and then the investor would be indifferent between, let's say, getting investing in loans at 10% interest with buyback guarantee or investing at loans with, let's say, uh, without buyback guarantee, but with the interest of let's say fourteen percent, if the annualized bad bad debt rate is four four percent, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, the net is the net net uh, income is the same ten percent. Yeah. Obviously, without buyback guarantee, there is this kind of additional element of uh, of volatility of uh, of kind of uncertainty. So that's perhaps why investors typically prefer loans uh, with buyback guarantee. Then also in some jurisdictions, the investor is taxed on a kind of investment by investment basis. So buyback guarantee is also more tax efficient for them. Mm -hmm. That's also uh, a one aspect that we need to take into account of kind of differentiating between loans with buyback guarantee and without. Ja, und da ist es schon vorbei, das Peer-to-Peer -peer Lifestyle Projekt Nummer 2 bei Mintos. Ich mag das jetzt abschließend alles gar nicht groß bewerten. Ich meine, das war so viel Content, wenn ihr es bis hierhin verfolgt habt. Ich kann nur sagen, ich habe ein extrem professionelles Team kennengelernt und ein fettes Danke an dieser Stelle nochmal an Mintos und natürlich auch an die Community und jeden, der das bis hierher verfolgt hat. 
Und ja, ansonsten, das nächste Projekt wird im Oktober stattfinden. Plattform steht auch schon fest. Das heißt, diesmal gibt es kein neues Voting. Das neue Voting wird dann erst wahrscheinlich mit Erscheinen der nächsten Videos kommen, was ungefähr ja, im November sein wird. Vielleicht im Dezember. Na, eher Dezember. Naja, wir schauen mal. Auf jeden Fall, ja, wenn du Bock hast, dann abonniere unbedingt den Kanal, dass du nichts verpasst und lass uns auch gerne in Diskussion über, die, über das jetzige Projekt kommen und wenn du Verbesserungsvorschläge hast, dann auch immer, immer her damit. Und ansonsten lasse ich dich jetzt noch allein mit ein paar abschließenden Impressionen, die ich so auf meinem Handy und wo auch immer gefunden habe und wünsche dir einen schönen Tag und bis zum nächsten Mal.